this is the last topic in unit number one. The title of the topic is Secure Software Development Framework. This was initiated in USA. All great security practices of information technology, they have come to the rest of the world from USA. This practice also came to us from USA. In USA, there is an institute which is a reputed, the most reputed institute in the world for in matters relating to information technology and standards. So that institute is called National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST. It is located in the state of Maryland in USA. Now the word is national. National here doesn't mean India. National refers to USA. So it's a US institute. And uh, they published a guideline which was called SSDF version 1.1. It was a special publication for them and the title was Secure Software Development Framework SSDF Recommendations for Mitigating the risk of software vulnerabilities. So the title itself is very nice because it explains very clearly what we are trying to achieve. Here our aim is to develop software which is secure. Before this guideline came, software was still being developed. But you know what was the problem? The problem was, after development of the software, they found problems with the security aspect. And then, they had to go back to square number one and start working on that again. Which means, more time is wasted and more money is wasted. So, the NIST Institute they recommended that don't wait for the users to tell you that this is a problem with your software. While designing the software itself, while writing the code of the software, you keep in your mind what are the safety requirements, what are the information security requirements. And keeping those security requirements in mind, then you develop the software. So you will understand this. Let's have with a small example. Suppose we are thinking of banking software. So in banking, one of the activities is change of the usage mode. That means my card, <coughs> should I use it on ATM only? or at merchants or online. Three usage are possible for any debit or credit card. So for safety purpose, let us say one user has originally said that I want to use my card only on ATM and merchant POS. He has disabled online purchases. Now somebody wants to misuse the card he cannot use it, misuse it on ATM very easily because he needs the card. At merchant establishments also, he needs the card. Card he will not be able to get. But if he is able to do online transactions, they can be done without the card being present. All that you need is the 16 digit card number and the CVV. So, and OTP. OTP is not a very big issue because SIM cards can be cloned. There are so many cases going on like that. SIM card is cloned by the cyber criminal. So if he is confident that he can clone the SIM card, what he will do? He goes online and changes the usage to include card not present, CLP, that means e-commerce transactions. 
Now, if this is going on, and if this is done without OTP, this is possible. Fraud is possible. But at this stage, if you make a requirement that one more OTP is required, then fraud can be avoided. So, what what did you learn from this? That many security lapses can be avoided if you write your program like this that it is definitely more secure. So our aim should be to write software which is more secure initially itself. Later, if fraud happens, customer complaints come and then you remove the bugs, cost is more, time is more. So the aim of every software developer should be to develop secure software for that purpose. This guideline was given by NISD. <clears throat> Why is it necessary that our software should be secure? To understand this, please understand that every organization will have certain strengths, weaknesses, which are inherent in the organization and in the environment. There will be certain opportunities where you can make money and there will also be threats which can pose danger to you. So your strength could be, let us say, it's a cash rich company. Example, Microsoft is a cash rich company. Facebook is a cash rich company. All companies are not cash rich. Weaknesses will also be there. There will be an organization which is very slow in R&D. That's a weakness for the organization. In modern times, to keep up with the movement of technology, you must have a very proactive, very dynamic R&D team. So that can be a weakness. Then opportunities are always there in the environment. Everything that happens in the environment creates new opportunities to make money. Anything which happens good or bad in the environment gives you new opportunities to make money. Remember this. Covid came. Lots of people died all over the world. But Covid also created business opportunities. Vaccines were created after Covid came. Not only vaccines, masks, manufacture of masks, masks started after Covid came. And another very interesting thing, before Covid came, nobody was keeping oxygen cylinders in the house. When Covid came, hospitals were facing oxygen shortage. Many rich people, they converted one room in their bungalow to an ICU room. In that they provided the oxygen. Their idea was that if a person in the family falls sick and if we are not able to get ICU in the hospital, at least for some time we can manage the patient in our house. Thousands of people in every city have done that. How much business that has created? Enormous. Right? And in the field of IT, COVID has given great opportunities. You must have heard of the Arogya Setu. Arogya Setu app. Arogya Setu app is again done by some developers like you. You got a chance to create a new app and put it in the market. And a new website was created, Covin, where you could schedule your vaccination. Who created that? People like you. It was opportunity for you. So, Covid might have been very bad. But Covid also created a lot of opportunities for many sectors of economy, especially for IT. And uh, you know, during the lockdowns, all offline classes were disrupted. So, we went for online classes. 
more data was used more use was made of google meet microsoft teams skype zoom cisco webex go to meeting all of them made money right so now will you say covid is good or bad <laughs> yes as far as it sector is concerned covid was a boon for us it gave us so many opportunities that is what happens students in everything whatever happens in the environment good or bad there are opportunities to make money a war happens you think war is bad because people are dying because war is the only one which creates business for companies like ecil bdl drdo they are living by what they are suppliers to ministry of defense army navy air force if there are no wars if there are no enemies if pakistan and china both become our bye bye anybody will buy weapons fighters bombers battle tanks torpedoes naval ships submarines and our companies are the ones which are producing all these products so war which kills so many human beings is also creating lot of opportunities that is why war will never go away from the world war will always be there war is necessary for economic development technological development and business so opportunities are always there and then there are many threats also threats are those which can disrupt your working your normal working can be disrupted when a threat happens in the market just as there are many opportunities there are always many threats also first threat is <coughs> my competitor the competitor company comes out with a design which is slightly better than me it is a biggest threat it is an opportunity for them but for me it is a big threat or in the environment the government policies change and government allows import of my product from foreign companies it is a biggest threat for me because if foreign products are available nobody may buy my product so in the environment always there will be many threats but dear students you are from it sector you should know that in today's environment the greatest threat for a company is lack of information security because when information is insecure your customer privacy is lost private data of your customer like photographs email ids mobile numbers and card details it is our duty to protect them that will be leaked out when our information security is bad and if this happens once no customer will ever buy anything from us they will be scared similarly if customers okay if competitors come to know all the technical details of our product from our internal correspondence or by leaking out our drawings then it is very easy for the competitor to make a slight improvement and bring a better product in the market so from all this what do you see that information security or lack of information security or failure of information security is the biggest threat today today whether a company is doing only online sales or online and offline sales in either case the presence on the website presence on the mobile app 
is vital and therefore the lack of information security poses the greatest threat to any company today that is the importance of this subject itself this subject is important because you guys are the ones who are going to get into organizations develop new software manage the it network manage the databases and all that so you have to be constantly rammed into your mind that security of the information is important that is why in your third semester this subject has been included so now with this background let's see what are the ssdf or secure software development framework practices just now i told you secure software development framework is given by nisd so they have not even not only given you the title they have also given for ssdf what are the practices we should follow some 10 to 12 practices they have given actually it differs from one textbook to another i have seen some textbooks they write only eight practices some write 10 practices some are writing even 12 practices but i went through that i have found that 10 practices are actually enough they cover the subject almost completely so i have made my slides by including those 10 practices i will show you the practices one by one now after this slide but before we go to the actual practices what do these practices say that's what you have to understand these practices say that your secure software development happens in four steps the first step is prepare your organization for secure development the organization has to be prepared why this is said understand when you are at a very junior level in your organization your job will be generally what your job will be to ensure that everything is working nicely no customer complaint comes and connectivity to the customer is provided easily everything you would like to make it easy for the customer very good not nothing wrong with that you have to make everything easy for the customer because customer satisfaction is our main aim very good but in this process of making everything very simple for the customer what happens is many a times you will make certain provisions or uh, you will allow certain access to information forgetting the security aspect of that if you do that your immediate problem will be solved customer got his access he was able to let us say transfer funds and he is very happy but by that if you have created a security lapse in your organization then that means the people who are managing your it department they have not been mentally prepared to keep the security aspects in mind therefore nist practices say that you should start by preparing your organization for information security this is done by making everyone aware of the need for security and everyone aware of the practices which we are following in order to make our software our apps and our network most secure so the first step in every practice will be to prepare the organization the second step will be to protect the software now protecting the software means what today's software follows the component approach in 
very old time, that means before this component based development came into picture, softwares were written as long programs containing long codes which were very difficult to debug. Because if there was a bug, to find that bug, you have to spend a lot of time. Today, nobody writes softwares like that. Just as we do in hardware, in hardware, we make the product into so many components. Each component is tested separately. And once we are satisfied about the functional functionality of that component, then we fit into the product. <coughs> so with, with that, what happens? <coughs> Since every component has been separately tested, there is very little doubt left afterwards that the total product will work. The same approach is followed now for writing software also. In the software also, there are so many components. For example, there may be one component which deals with conditional logic. That means, if statement or if else statement, that may be the conditional part. There may be another part which deals with, say, some visualization of data. Extracting the data from a database, then creating a graph with that. With Python, it can be done. With some wizards also, it can be done. So like that, when there are several components in the software, protecting the software means each and every component must be protected from tampering and from unauthorized access. Who is allowed to access that component? That should be clearly verified and those who are really trustworthy only should be allowed to access that component. The third part is producing well-secured software. Now, why this third step is included? The reason is many companies, they produce some part of the software themselves and they also subcontract or offshore the software development to other companies. Look at a company like Facebook. Facebook has their own developers. They work in USA. But a lot of work for Facebook is done by Indian companies in Noida, <coughs> Bangalore, Pune and some in Hyderabad. Now these companies, small companies which are located in Hyderabad, they are called offshoring companies because they are far away from the seashores of USA. We, our people are working here. Financial benefit of this is that when the people are working here, they can be paid less salaries in rupees rather, rather than more salaries in Los Angeles in dollars. So this is advantageous for the company. So when this offshoring business is done, lot of components of the overall software, they are actually coming from sources which are not within your company. So for these things, for such components, you have to ensure that that small company in Noida or small company in Bangalore which is writing components of your software, they should also have the awareness of the requirements of safety, security. So not only our people have to be prepared, we have to prepare our contractors and subcontractors who are offshore, we have to prepare them also so that they will produce software which is less vulnerable to threats. And fourth, respond to vulnerabilities. This particular step will come several times in this subject. Respond to vulnerabilities. 
Now vulnerability, I explained to you earlier also, consists of two parts. One is threat. Second is attack. Every threat doesn't result in an attack. But every attack can be seen as a threat even before it happens. That is what is needed by IT people. So they have to identify what are all the threats which can happen and then see how to handle the attacks. A threat becomes an attack when actual breach takes place. Either security breach or data breach. When that takes place, then we say that a threat has been converted into attack. When this happens, you must respond to the vulnerability. Vulnerability is threat as well as attack. But when attack happens, you have to respond to it. How do you respond? There are two parts in that. First, recover. This is the emergency part. Emergency part is recover. That means bring your information system to the same stage at which it was before this attack happened. And second is improve the system because you must learn from this experience and you must improve your information system so that the same threat doesn't happen again in future. This is covered in the fourth part, respond to vulnerabilities. So with this background, now I am ready to explain to you the practices of SSDF. The first practice is to provide training. Why we have to provide training? The first sentence itself is very clear. This is actually an axiom. You must always remember is information security is everyone's job. It is not the job of only security manager. It is not the job of only network administrator or database administrator. Information security is everyone's job. And everyone includes developers. You people are going to be developers. Service engineers, program managers, and product managers. All must understand the basics of security. That's why in your MCA course, you are being asked to learn this subject of information security. Actually, as you have seen for all these days, it is not a hardcore technical subject. It is more of security oriented or more of security philosophy oriented. It is more like that. But this is required because before you get into an organization and before you become either a network administrator or a system administrator or a developer, we have to drill into your mind the essentials of information security. So just as it is being done for you now, what about the existing employees in the organization? They may not be all MCS. Many of them will be MBS. Yes. Many of them will be BCOMs, MCOMs, BAs will be there, people from liberal arts background will be there. They have not studied this subject at all. In a course like BCOM, there will be no subject like information security. So, all the people in the organization, in whichever role they are working, program manager, product manager, they have to be given proper training so that they understand first the importance of security then they understand how to build security into the software and services so that our products are more secure but last line is again very important we must still address the business needs 
and we must deliver value to the user the word user is used user can be an internal user a windows user or a user can be an external customer a web customer or an app customer for all these users value has to be provided this is being kept in mind and at the same time everyone involved in the organization also understands the basics of security and how security is to be built into the software this is the important concept you have to remember in this particular practice because after the software is developed if you are going to identify the bug and remove it that is not desirable we have to keep the security in mind while initial development is going on if you do that your software will get developed without any security bugs to ensure that this is the practice number 1 understood practice number 2 define security requirements so what level of security we require what level of security we require means it should be such that all the vital data must be protected at the same time the access to the external customers and access to the internal users our own managers and our own staff must be available so since as we said in the earlier classes there is a cia triad cia triad diagram also i showed you earlier cia stands for confidentiality integrity and availability and uh, this is what we have to do here we have to define the security requirement keeping in mind that confidentiality of information is to be maintained and at the same time availability shall be provided to the users when they need it and these security requirements they must be constantly updated also environment is changing the the skills the hardware used by hackers and cyber criminals that is constantly getting upgraded so our safety requirements also must be continually updated they must reflect changes in the functionality which are required and also they must identify changes to the threat landscape threat landscape refers to what are the existing threats and what new threats are now emerging in the environment and the optimal time the best time the most suitable time to define the security requirements is during the initial design and planning stages that means preferably before the developers start writing the code if if at that time you have already defined your security requirements perfectly then the development of the software will accordingly be very secure this was practice number 2 now practice number 3 the title of the third practice is define metrics and compliance report now what is a metric metric is a parameter metrics is a performance indicator which can be quantitatively measured there was a great scientist you must have heard his name somewhere in your school days lord kelvin we have the temperature scale degree kelvin named after lord kelvin so lord kelvin gave us a very famous quote 
he said you cannot improve anything unless you measure it without measuring a parameter without measuring a quantity without measuring a rate of failure you cannot improve it at all it's obvious if something has not been measured how will you first of all plan to improve it and even if you did improve how will you check after that whether improvement has happened or further deterioration has happened there will be no way to find out so lord kelvin said first measurement is important the same rule the same principle applies to software development also our security requirements should not be vague they should not be just qualitative they should be quantitative that means we should be able to measure something we should be able to measure for example in two factor authentication what is the difficulty level in breaking the two level authentication authentication suppose we are going to also introduce biometric authentication then what are the probabilities in terms of numbers of violating that rule of authentication so everything that you want to implement in secure software development you must define how you are going to measure it once that is done then actual measurement should be done and the third and the final step is compliance reporting that means at every step after measurement you must also say whether our metric is meeting the laid down requirement or not meeting the laid down requirement that is compliance reporting so simply defining the metric is not the end after that measurement has to be done the result of measurement must be compared with the predefined metric and then we should say whether we have complied with the security requirement or not so these things must be defined early early means right in the beginning stage of the software then the developmental team which is going to consist of mcas and other people like you they will be able to understand what are the risks associated with security issues how to identify them and how to fix them after you identify the risks you have to fix them also by properly rewriting or properly modifying the source code so that that defect can be avoided so that that bug can be removed this will be able to eventually remove all the vulnerabilities which have been discovered especially those vulnerabilities which are critical critical means most important so most important criticalities most important critical vulnerabilities are those one which will affect the working of the website which will affect the transactions on our mobile app and also the third one which will compromise the private or financial data of our customers and users so these are the critical or important security issues they should be given a very high severity rating and they must be fixed within the specified time frame and again last line says something very important these should never be relaxed at any cost this happens in many organizations 
you find a vulnerability you impose a new rule that okay in future this will be the practice followed so that the harm doesn't happen to the customer interaction and then after some time based upon the requests of certain people you start relaxing the rule the more and more you relax the rule the vulnerability comes back the more and more you start giving exemptions for the strict implementation of that rule then your vulnerability is going to slowly return to your software so that should never be allowed to happen whatever security requirements we are building into our software it should never be bypassed under any circumstances and if a manual action is needed that should not be relaxed at any cost because once you relax it you may have to relax for other users also you cannot treat different users differently so eventually you will be relaxing it for all the customers all the users and then that will mean your software will become more and more insecure so this is what you understand by practice number 3 so uh, now students have three practices i have defined i know you will not be able to note down the entire statement of each practice but at least the title of each practice you must be able to write in your examination and you must be able to remember it for writing that so once again i am showing you your practice number 1 is that you must provide training to each and every person in the organization in dealing with security issues practice number 2 is defined as defining the security requirements so our security requirements have to be defined so that the applications are secure systems remain secure apps remain secure data remains confidential and all that all this must be defined not only it should be defined it should be defined right in the early stages of development of the software so that the developers can build security into the software they should not have to release security patches after that when you release security patches after the software has been deployed the patches may be installed by every customer or may not be installed yes there will be certain customers who will not bother to install the security patches so let us say microsoft sends me a security patch as soon as microsoft sends me a security patch do i implement it immediately do i install in my system immediately i don't simple reason is my laptop will not be on all the time i switch on my laptop maybe once in a day and that to only for 10 minutes and that time i will not have the time and patience to look for the security patches which have come and whether to install them or not and then to wait for the laptop to install and restart no user has got that much free time so we must try to give all the security features of the software in the initial stage of the development of the software so that it doesn't have to go as a patch and the third practice is all the security re requirements must be defined in quantitative terms measurable terms once they are in measurable terms then it becomes possible for you to measure the actual performance benchmark it against the predefined metric and then you can comply and you can report that compliance is happening so i will stop today's class here i hope you have understood all the three practices there are seven more practices which i am going to talk to you about in the next class hopefully i will complete those practices also so these 10 practices or 12 practices they are the part of NIST's secure software development framework
सो डू यू हैव एनी क्वेश्चन ऑन दिस स्टूडेंट्स एनी क्वेश्चन